Do you feel it? Are you tired of hearing it all of the time? Everything is going faster these days, right? You see, change is no longer linear. It is exponential. And that is really hard for our minds to grasp. And in order to keep up, you don't need to just learn faster. You need to unlearn faster as well. You need to increase the frequency of your unlearning loops to unlock exponential learning. So let's dive in and take a look at what all of this means for you. Hey everyone, my name is David. I am co-founder and chief strategy officer here at Growth Tribe. In this video, we're gonna talk about how learning, similarly to technology, can grow exponentially and how unlearning might be the single most important key to adaptation. But first, let's dive into why we're here and what this term exponential actually means. So the pace of change is now exponential. The rate of change in our lives has gone from linear to exponential. And exponential growth or exponential change is a concept that is extremely hard for our predominantly linear brains to grasp. So I like to keep it simple. Let's use a simple bunny analogy. This is what bunnies growing exponentially looks like. Let's say we start with two bunnies in year zero. And let's say that they reproduce yearly. And before you know it, you have an enormous, unimaginable amount of bunnies. And technology seems very similar to these bunnies. It's growing and growing and inducing exponential change. Now, one way to tackle this change is to first admit it, to accept that things are changing exponentially. At the human, the individual capability level, we need to stop approaching the problem linearly and unlearn our old models and ways of working in order to unlock exponential growth in human knowledge and capital. Now, by the way, if you want some more resources on exponential change, you can check out Farnham Street's article on power laws, how nonlinear relationships amplify results, or Gates Law, how progress compounds and why it matters. And as usual, we'll add all of the links in the description below. So let's talk a little bit more about exponential learning. I like to call it fighting fire with fire fighting exponential change with exponential learning. We know that technology is changing at an exponential rate, and that can be a quite scary, fear-inducing trend. I mean, think about how many things could have changed in a lifetime, for example. Remember floppy disks? Remember Nokia's 3310s? VHS tapes? Sony Walkmans? all long gone. But there is a way for us to counterbalance this, to be more adaptable, to fight fire with fire. And that is through learning. Because learning, similarly to technology, compounds over time and grows exponentially. Knowledge compounds on top of knowledge and the cumulative effect of being a little bit better at decision making has a tremendous effect in the long run. I would argue it's one of the greatest investments that you can make as an individual to adapt to this exponential change. Yet the difficult part is not the learning. The difficult part is the unlearning. Walking back down the mountain as you climb the exponential curve of adaptation. What happens is that the trajectory of your learning suddenly begins to follow old paradigms. You're following the wrong path. As new knowledge and innovation occurs, what you once knew and needed to learn is no longer relevant. New paradigms emerge faster than ever. And so this requires a moment of unlearning to walk back down the curve or the mountain or however you like to visualize it and to join back with the new paradigm. And this process repeats itself. You then climb, new knowledge arises, new paradigms are created, and you must unlearn the old ones to adjust to the new paradigms. Keep finding these new paths. And life is full of these unlearning moments. In fact, you have constantly been unlearning, but perhaps without even realizing it. I mean, what are some examples then? Well, if we look at historical examples, there are plenty. We once thought the earth was flat, but we now know the earth is round. You know, well, at least most of us. We also once thought that the earth was was at the center of the universe. But we now know that the Earth revolves around the sun within a galaxy which moves in an expanding universe. We once thought that humans wouldn't fly for a million or 10 million years as declared by this article. Then nine days later, the Wright brothers took humans on their first flight. And for years, even the internet was blasted as being overhyped, a wasteland and unlikely to deliver on the predicted virtual communities or telecommuting workers. With the benefit of hindsight, these paradigm shifts are obvious. So how about current unlearning? What should we currently be unlearning? How about the fact that your phone has become an extended part of your mind and even identity? Andy Chalmers and David Clark's theory on the extended self, for example, that argues that essentially the mind and the self are extended to these devices that help us perform what we ordinarily, what we maybe 10, 20 years ago, thought of as our cognitive tasks. Obvious example, can we get around without Google Maps anymore? How much of your social life now takes place on social media? How much of you is digital these 
these days? How much have you unlearned and handed over to your phone to handle? And if that sounds scary, there is much, much more to come. It's a brave new world out there. What are we going to have to unlearn in the coming years? Ectogenesis is a real possibility that growing embryos outside of the womb might become the new normal. AI will gain or at least realistically replicate consciousness and maybe even emotional intelligence. What about death? Is death inevitable? We may soon experience the world's first bicentenarian. Space tourism, you know, it was a dream a while ago. Maybe it will become mainstream. Jeff and Richard won't be having all of the fun. What about a more recent example, a more simple example, the upheaval in our understanding of where work can take place. Before, the majority of us believe that to be successful, work needs to be co-located. We all need to be in the same office. Yet a global pandemic changed that rapidly. And almost overnight, we moved to remote work or some form of remote work. Okay, but why is this interesting? So in his thesis on the five Five levels of remote work, Matt Mullenweg outlines five levels of working remotely. First level is where there's no deliberate effort to make things more remote friendly. Level two is where many companies have found themselves recently, accepting that work might need to happen at home for a while and then recreating what they were already doing in the office in a remote setting this time. At the third level, you see people invest in better equipment and in more robust asynchronous processes. Then they even start to replace meetings little by little. Then you have level four, when things truly go asynchronous. You evaluate people's work on what they produce, not how or when they produce it. And finally, it's always useful to have an ideal that's not wholly attainable, and that's level five. That's like nirvana. Now, the point of this story is that you can't reach level three, for example, without passing through level one first, then through level two. Past these levels, the faster you'll get closer to level three, level four, and then possibly nirvana. Now, at Growth Tribe, we have a theory about unlearning loops and the increased speed at which these loops need to happen. Because whereas in the past, the time between these unlearning loops was, you know, fairly wide, if we look at history, decades may have even passed between each loop. In recent times, we have been unlearning at the order of months, sometimes even weeks. And now, well, we're seeing this contract even further. Unlearning loops are grouped tighter and tighter. Whereas before you had more time to adjust and unlearn outdated paradigms, now rapid change is an opportunity to unlearn more rapidly. And I don't just want to create fear. This is actually an opportunity. Like any gap, it's also an opportunity. Let's imagine a future where cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, become a real, well-established type of currency. Now think about it. Those who would have accepted first that cryptocurrencies are a true possibility, a technology of the future. They would have been the first to unlearn that fiat currency, dollar, yuan, euro, and the gold standard are the only way for currency. Once they pass that unlearning loop, they can then start taking it to the next unlearning phase, that maybe Bitcoin would not be the dominant cryptocurrency and that others are challenging the dominance and the utility. They would have been already one step ahead. And it's not easy, right? We're challenging, in this case, a system and knowledge that has stood for thousands of years. Old habits die hard, it's true. Well, we believe you better start learning to kill some of these old habits more quickly than ever before. Okay, so let's actually get a little bit practical now, right? We've talked about the why, we've introduced unlearning, these unlearning loops. We're gonna share some resources and some actionable tips to help you on your unlearning journey to unlock this exponential learning and fight fire with fire. Grasp this opportunity. First up, we'd love you to check out Think Again by Adam Grant. Now, Think Again is a book about the benefits of doubt and how we can get better at embracing the unknown and the joy of being wrong. Some evidence has shown that creative geniuses are not attached to one single identity, but are constantly willing to rethink their stances. Leaders who admit that they don't know something and seek critical feedback back lead more productive and innovative team. Rethinking and unlearning is a skill that can actually be developed and that's what Adam Grant teaches us in his book. Now we have a nice little canvas that we call the unlearning canvas that you can also use to get started right now to help direct your unlearning initiatives. Unlearning happens when we experiment with new ways of thinking and working to achieve better results. So in this canvas you start by understanding and identifying the current paradigm where and how it happens and then you move it into a new paradigm and 
which initiatives to start unlearning. It's pretty self-explanatory, check out the canvas. You fill this canvas out from the left to the right and define some key unlearning initiatives. Okay, since we're talking about books, second book that we advise is The Power of Habit, Why We Do What We Do in Life and in Business. In this book, Charles Duhigg estimates that 40 to 45% of what we do isn't a decision at all. It's just a habit, 40 to 45%, that's almost half. These automatic actions occur because the thinking behind our habits happens in one of the oldest parts of our brain, the basal ganglia, where thinking doesn't feel as active as the thinking that happens in the prefrontal cortex. One of the ways to begin unlearning is by actively thinking about the decisions you make that seem automatic. Which decisions are you making every day that seem automatic? He asks us which beliefs, habits and mindsets are serving us well, and which habits and knowledge aren't serving you as well as they once did. It's a really nice exercise to do. Which beliefs, habits and mindsets are serving me well, and which habits and knowledge are actually not serving me as well as they used to do, as they once did. Finally, before we dive into some really practical tips, check out the Medici effect, what elephants and epidemics can teach us about innovation. Now, getting out of your comfort zone and considering new ideas and concepts is key to unlearning. The trick is to do so intentionally on a daily or on a weekly basis. Franz Johansson in this book, The Medici Effect, he shows us how breakthrough ideas most often occur when we bring concepts from one field into new familiar territory. It's almost like the definition of creativity, linking nodes in a network that almost never interact. He offers examples of how we can turn the ideas that we discover into path-breaking innovations. One example, Charles Darwin was actually a geologist when he proposed the theory of evolution, and it was in a astronomer who finally explained what happened to the dinosaurs. So what breakthroughs could you make by unlearning your well-established connections in knowledge and linking new nodes together? The idea here is to transfer new knowledge to make new unique connections and it's the basis of creativity. Okay, so if you don't have time to read these books, I also want to give you some quick tips that you can implement right now. What are some things that you can start doing to shorten your unlearning loops, to increase the frequency of these loops? First one, flow triggers. Stephen Cotton coined the term flow triggers which release dopamine in the body and get you to a state of flow, allowing you to achieve peak performance. These flow triggers can be just as efficient in creating an unlearning attitude. Take risks, encounter novelty, deal with complexity, face unpredictability, train pattern recognition. Additive knowledge. One way to begin unlearning is to seek additive knowledge in familiar areas and use that new knowledge to start pulling up and modifying old knowledge you're adding things together. It's simply flooding or overwhelming an old action, an old habit, an old paradigm with newly desired action or habit. This approach is very similar to the full immersion approach when you try to learn a new language. You fully immerse yourself in the new culture and in the new language. You have another technique called the good fight club. Now, conflict isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially when it comes to task conflict. There's a trait in psychology called agreeableness, and it's normally the trait that is assigned to people who want to avoid avoid conflict. Now, agreeable people can often contribute to groupthink. However, they will not challenge proposals, assumptions, and ideas like disagreeable people might do. The idea here is to actively seek out people who are not agreeable and actively seek out conflict. The next one is kind of similar, but not exactly the same. It's called learn from the opposite. Now, when teamed with a business professional from a different background, we are better able to look at things from a fresh viewpoint. Diversity in teams and organizations seems to be good for everyone. By exposing ourselves to something new, we begin the unlearning process and open ourselves up to learning, well, something new. And the last tip is also kind of linked to the previous one, but again, not exactly. It's probably my favorite uh, of all of these sort of actionable tips. It's randomness. Opening ourselves up to random experiences with no goal and absolutely no intention. I'll give you a cool way to do this. What you can do is you could go to a subreddit called lectures, for example, and you look at the top 10 lectures on that subreddit for that day. We'll give you the link later on. And watch one of those lectures on something that feels completely random to you. Do that for a week. Watch one lecture a week, every evening or during the day on something completely random. And I can almost promise you that you will start unlearning some old paradigms and opening up your brain 
gain two more cognitive bandwidth. Okay, I hope this was interesting. I hope that you'll start unlearning as, as soon as possible. As always, the links to all of the resources are in the description below, so check them out. I really hope this guide to unlearning helps you and your organization on the road to this exponential learning and adaptability in the face of change. If you enjoyed the video, hit like and subscribe for updates as we release more and more, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Happy unlearning and see you next time. As always, the links to all of the resources are in the description below, so check them out. I hope this guide to unlearning helps you and your organization on the road to exponential learning and adaptability in the face of change. If you enjoyed the video, as always, hit like, punch the subscribe button, hit that bell for updates as we release more and more content. And you know, please let me know what you think in the comments below. Happy unlearning and see you next time.